Hello, welcome to Meanwhile at the Castle podcast. I'm Queen Emily. I'm Queen Deborah. And we are queens of our castles, keeping the domestic arts alive. And today is May 24th, <laughs> I have to remember. Tuesday, May 24th. What does it and really even matter? It doesn't. Okay. <laughs> and it's episode 70. <laughs> Hooray, yes. we're 70 podcasts old. <laughs> I feel, I feel 70 podcasts old today. <laughs> oh, Emily. Emily had an adult fall. <laughs> I did. I had an adult fall. We shouldn't laugh because it's a serious thing. But I can't help Can we it. put a link for Ryan Hamilton stand up in the notes yeah. below? <laughs> you send it to me. I will. I'll send it to you. Look below if you want to see a really great, very clean, totally cheerful and adorable stand up comic routine. Um, including information about having an adult fall. Yeah, so I fell down my front porch steps the other so day, she, and I'm very sore. She feels 70 but I didn't castle. break anything, and I am really happy about that. <laughs> anyway, today we are going to do a life update, then we are going to do finished objects, and then we're going to have a little chat about needle storage. Then we will cover works in progress. And then Deborah's got some, oh, we have our question for the day, our getting to know you question for the day. And then Deborah's going to share, what were you going to share? Something about? Oh, I have just some incoming lovely things Excellent. and shop update. Yep. And shop update at the end. We have a lot to talk about. We so, do yeah, so, so much. So get a drink, get yeah. your knitting because we'll be here for a while. <laughs> Settle in. It's yeah. going to be a long one. You can pause, take potty breaks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so life update. Deborah, tell us. Oh, about it has life. been. Okay, my favorite time of the year is here. It's the most wonderful it is, time. It is. It is gardening time. It's a time when the birds are singing and the sun is shining and the grass is green sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. So, um, okay, so. Um, I have been preparing for gardening season and I decided that I wanted to add some raised garden boxes to my garden and I wanted to make them taller than typical 9 to 12 inches because we're 70 podcasts old. <laughs> I'm not getting younger and I know that every year that goes by I will wish it was taller and taller and taller. <laughs> so maybe... Um, with my husband, I designed some garden boxes using some recycled pallets, which those aren't the sturdiest or the longest wearing and lasting, but they were free. And free wood today. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so I am really proud of myself though. This was going to be my project, but I have the most wonderful husband who just wants to help make all of my dreams come true. And so... He made sure I didn't cut off any limbs <laughs> with the power tools or anything and help me with building these. So made two four foot wide by eight foot long by 18 inches tall garden boxes and put those in my garden and put a um, like trellis arch between the two so I can grow some climbing things to add my growing space and I'm just really happy about it and things are sprouting. My carrots are sprouting and zucchini and um, I planted red noodle beans and green beans and those are sprouting and I've got all sorts of other things going. And my raspberries are, oh, there are so many blooms on the raspberries. So anyways, I'm so excited. <laughs> I even went, I decided it was time. No more, no more plumber's butt. <laughs> I've got overalls for gardening because <laughs> I'm so tired of my pants falling down and my shirt coming up and always trying to fix those two. So I'm a real gardener now. That I've reminds got me my of straw hat. Grandpa and his coveralls. Oh, Grandpa yeah, Greg. he always wore those, always. Um, also, I um, participated as a vendor at the Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair in May, which is this month. So that was just so fun. I loved it. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> but I loved it so much. It's my favorite because I get to, number one, interact with customers face to face, which I love that. And it always makes me happy because then people can pick out the exact skein they mm. want instead of getting 
look of the draw. Because, you know, you see skein, you see yarn, you're like, oh, I like that. But when you get it, like the color placement may be slightly different because they're hand dyed yarns. And you're like, oh, but I wanted that skein. So you got to pick out the one that has the more pink or the more whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So I know that people are satisfied with the ones that they picked out. Also, I love to create an atmosphere, an environment where you come and, you know, it feels a certain way, it makes you feel a certain way. And I hope that people come when they enter my little booth and feel childlike, carefree, lighthearted, happy, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, and so it was just, it was fun for me. It was darling. Um, I even had some friends that surprised me. Um, one friend from Idaho that showed up and met her daughter there that I've been friends with for years, but haven't seen her for a while and had an impromptu knitting lesson. I gave her a knitting lesson because she's a crocheter and she watches this. <laughs> and um, all three of my girls came and helped in various ways. And my oldest daughter, Claire, came and did some secret shopping for me for Mother's Day. So I ended up with lots of lovely things. That's so fun. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. Um, I've also been uh, vintage on, on a hunt for specific things from different vintage stores. Um, one topic of which I'll talk about later, but we've been having fun <laughs> reminiscing yes, we have. Uh, in our childhood. But the other thing is I've been searching for vintage records. Mm -hmm. um, I just decided I wanted to have a record player. What I'd really love is a hand crank phonograph mm -hmm. because when the power goes out, what do you want to do if you want to listen to music? Well, I could listen to it on my phone or I could hand crank a phonograph and so listen to cooler. records. I mean, come on. And I could take <laughs> it out back when we're relaxing out there. It's probably sounds better than it really is, but that's <laughs> anyway. So I've been collecting records from the uh, music from the twenties, thirties and forties. And it's been so fun to like search for those and bring some home and listen to it go. Oh, yeah, that's not what I was expecting. <laughs> and then others that are really joyful surprises and others that are like yodeling. <laughs> that, like, so who knew it would be so great? <laughs> So anyways, that's been, that's been my fun. That's excellent. What about you, Emily? All right, let's see. I'm trying to review. Do I have a life? What's been happening in you my do. life? <laughs> it was not fun. That really knocked the memory out of me. Yeah. So um, we had a really lovely Mother's Day, and um, my kids gave me one of those digital picture frames, and then they send pictures to it, and it's been really fun because they send the weirdest. Because they are... <laughs> There are some weird pictures on my picture frame, but I really like this one that I'm looking at right just now. just randomly show up and you're like, what is that? Yes, it's hilarious, but I really love it. That's fun. Um, my oldest son and his wife, they have uh, moved a couple of hours away for school and they've had a couple different times, Mother's Day weekend and then this last weekend where they have come down and they've been staying with us Um for the weekend and so that's been really fun to have them and um this month i had a little breakthrough with my health where i've been just really struggling with my chronic fatigue for the past 10 months and this um two weeks ago i was diagnosed as pre-diabetic um borderline diabetic actually and so i have been able to make a lot of diet changes and medication and exercise and have really felt the effects in such a positive way so that's been really positive um and it's so it great sounds that you've sad but it's no it's good it's really good yeah what were you well saying? and along with the chronic fatigue that that you are doing so much better now that you're able to even do that because mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't have been able to. It's before. true. Yeah. I, I feel like with the chronic fatigue, I had come back up out of a crash, um, also called post-exertional malaise. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. um, come back up out of that to a point, but I just wasn't getting past that, that point. And, um, but now with all these other changes, I feel like I'm 
now coming further up, and if that makes right, sense. Yeah. So that's really been great, a great thing. Um, and this last weekend we had, again, all my kids were here. We all, we spoke and sang in our church, um, and then, and had family pictures done, which I don't have back yet or else I would totally oh. share some with you. So hopefully next time, but I'm so excited. My girls and I, and I, when I say my girls, I'm including my daughter-in-law, I consider them all my kids. Um, we all got these really pretty, like flowy, very feminine mm -hmm. dresses that are in style again, which makes me so happy. And um, anyway, they're just ruffly and all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm feeling I'm, like fairy princess today. Very cute. Wanted, like to your be a fairy top. princess and you're, you're super fun like that too. Yep. I'm just thinking of your top. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's just so fun. So yeah, that's been great. Our garden is getting torn out because we're going to be building a new shed. And so I'm not planting my garden this year, my vegetable garden, but I've been, you know, working on pots and things like that and Abby put together my youngest Abby put together her little fairy garden corner just a it little is so corner cute. It how is many pots cute. are there there's um like a a two foot by two foot little garden box and I think four or five I think four or five I can't remember um little flower pots that are just all filled up and darling and, and it's cute it's really fun she did a good job with it yeah but so, we've just been grilling and grilling and grilling the barbecue has been on every day, I think. <laughs> See, it's most wonderful good. time of the year. <laughs> that has been nice, um, which is great because it's been, you know, good for me, for my health, and everything's delicious. Yeah. And I ate my leftovers today, and now I'm sad. I have We made these really yummy kebabs and grilled pineapple, and I had some brown rice left over, and I just put all the chicken and the veggies and the pineapple and everything and mixed it all together. And that sounds for delicious. <laughs> oh, for breakfast. For breakfast. I don't like yep. breakfast. I like dinner for breakfast. I love, breakfast foods have always been my favorite. And that's the hardest part because breakfast foods are the things that I can't really eat yeah. very easily. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I just bought some salmon. I'm going to grill salmon for dinner tonight. I got tonight. some salmon too, Ooh. but I'm probably not going to do it for dinner tonight. Okay. Probably tomorrow. <laughs> and then I got fish sticks for my husband. <laughs> He won't eat. He won't eat seafood. And he's but like, well, stuff. I can handle. He can handle tuna, like from a can. Which is so interesting because that is the most fishy. But I of think the it's fish. just because he grew up with it, so it's it's he's a different used association. To it. And then um, he'll eat like that, and then he will eat every once in a while, like a fish and chips, kind of a breaded, yeah. you know, yeah. cod. Or something like that. I'm not um, a fan of seafood. I'm really not. Yeah. Like for years, I'm always telling you, I'm always trying to like shrimp. <laughs> I, I try it. really hard. I keep buying things with shrimp and keep eating it, and I'm like, why? I don't like it. And other <laughs> and other, but salmon and halibut, I like those two. Yeah, they're they're good. They're more meaty. They're kind of the meatier. Yeah. Of the fishes. And salmon. they're not. Mm, rubbery and I know yeah. it's all about preparation but we live in Utah we're not close to good seafood we have so, to buy ours like you know the kind of like wild caught and then frozen you know yeah. and then cook it in anyway yeah. that's about all okay that was a nice ramble all right finished objects okay I've only got two so well I'm gonna start with finished object it's not actually mine oh yes but you I get to partially take credit for it yes you do <laughs> so at the fiber festival I um, wanted to have something on display that was showing off my sprinkles DK base and so I have just the most lovely friend who lives near me. She also has a knitting podcast. Her name is Becky. And she re has a podcast with her mother and it is Granny Pan Knits. Mm -hmm. And so she did a sample knit for me. And she knit the heartwarming sweater. We were talking about sweaters and... We almost did one by Tannis Gray that it was like inspired by Lisa Frank and it had unicorns and stuff. And I was like, oh, that it'd be so cute. And then cute. I thought, okay, to display, it needs to be something slightly more relatable to customers that they may be likely to make. <laughs> and there's only a select 
group of people that are really interested in neon unicorn like <laughs> actually i think that list is growing but anyways so this is the sweater it's I love so it. pretty i picked the colors she probably would have picked different colors but i i really liked this combination and it's so pretty and she did such a good job it fits me beautifully it has this beautiful um, color work detail that matches up here, but the colors are kind of reversed in their placement um, on the sleeve. So I'll be wearing this this fall, and I didn't even knit a single stitch on it. Um, so sample knitters are the way to go for slow knitters like me. <laughs> well, yeah, there's no way you can knit everything you want to display no, at the, your yarn. No, I just can't. I just can't. But Becky's just so sweet and it's fun because she lives nearby and so you know I can just run over try things on and she could drop by and look through yarn and you know that kind of thing so um it was just it was lovely so I have pictures of it on display I haven't put it on because it's just too warm now <laughs> though I do have a video of my sister dancing <laughs> in it which she's so funny that's on my Instagram account um <laughs> Anyways, I really loved, I loved it with the tweed and the sprinkles there, how it just gives it such a fun playfulness to it. It's and so it's soft cute. and warm. So she did such a good job. I love that. So there's, there's my first finished object. Well, you dyed all the yarn. <laughs> I did dye all the yarn. We did an exchange where she knit a sweater for me and then she received a custom dye, you know, of sweater quantity of yarn for her and in whatever it was that she wanted that's so perfect. so she wanted to do something really specific and so it was fun to you know create that yarn for her so anyways it's excellent all, all right. right my first finished object is this pair of socks and i knit these in um a hunger games colorway a yarnberry hunger games colorway called flowers for rue but i saved one for myself i don't usually do that but I loved it immediately and saved one for myself and immediately caked it up. And then it sat caked up for, you know, a year and a half or something like that. But isn't it cute? It's very pretty. And this is a monkey socks, no, pearl. no pearl version, which I have knit many, many of you've heard me talk about before. Free on knitty.com. Just search for monkey socks. And I love it. It turned out so cute. I love this one because it's one where the pattern's just in my head. I don't have to look it up anymore. And and I just, yeah, I can just do it. I can just pull out yarn and do it. And um, I really am liking the contrast toes and cuffs, but not in, not in the heel. That's been really enjoyable. You get the fun contrast, but you don't have all. It seems like when you cut in in the middle, You've got extra, extra ends to weave in. You do. Because <laughs> you've got the end for this, the beginning for this, the end for that one, the beginning for this one. You know, it just mm -hmm. is a lot. So anyway, they turned out really great. And I'm happy to now put them in my drawer. No, they're probably going to go in the gift basket. I really don't need any more socks. <laughs> See, I don't need more socks, but I would like to vary the colors that I have because I have yes. like a whole bunch of two colors and really not yeah. much else. So that's what I'm working on. Well, and I'm thinking too, there's a lot of socks that I've had for a lot of years that I just wear and wear the same ones over and over again. And maybe I'm ready to change them out a little bit. I don't know. Anyway, they're so fun. Yeah, I like so the cute. texture. You can still see it's interesting. It still in makes the, the yarn show off. Yeah, in the camera, a lot of the times you can see things better than in person, but here I can see in person much better. Yeah, this, you can. The stitch pattern. I know, I'm like, can I get closer? I'm like, see. what is it that makes it so you can see it? Here, okay. let's try it's, this sock. Maybe sometimes it's just where the yarn, that one actually you can see better. Sometimes, like, this one's got that little extra bit of light. Mm hmm right there anyway it looks really pretty i like that fun um i didn't give some of the details i realized that oh, i was yeah. going to share because i thought maybe you'd want to know about this sweater that um she knit this size two sweater size two doesn't mean it's a u.s size two it's that's 
the sizing of the. She just numbered them like one yeah. through seven or so something. So she knit size two and um, doing that, it took 283 grams of the main color, which this is a DK weight and it is called sweet and salty. And then um, the other two colorways that she used for the color work on the yoke and then the sleeves. Um, she used 70 grams of Skyberry Pop and 76 grams of Berry Burst. So I don't know if that gives you... So that was you... five gram or five skeins of that DK weight. Yeah. Nice. So, and it didn't obviously use full five and mm -hmm. there was even a little bit more of this one left in another ball so anyways that's that's what it took to do the size two um she did lengthen i think actually i don't know if she did lengthen the body we just tried it on until i said okay that's how long <laughs> i want it to be but you will see that in the pictures all right um mm -hmm. i have been working on socks and working on socks and working on socks and kind of got burned out on socks. So I wanted to take a break from that. And then I realized I don't have any quick go-to projects when we're traveling or um, when I just want to pick it up for two minutes here and there. Mm -hmm. And so I needed something sock-like. So I pulled out um, some of my little balls of sheep -yas. I don't remember if that's how you say it, Katona, the little 25 gram balls of cotton yarn and knit myself some more wondrous dishcloths. These are, this pattern is by Jules of So Sweet Violet. And I have knit a lot of these, um, but primarily as gifts. So I didn't have a whole lot and I needed more. So I've got three more. And then um, I knit three more for my mother for Mother's Day with some softer, more pastel colors that she would like and gave those to her for Mother's Day. Um, I don't know which color was which because I've got the ball bands here. <laughs> color 247, 518, 392, 401. So if you're wondering what colors these are, you got to look those up and find out which one is which. I don't know. But those are the ones that I used between mine and some for my mom. And by the fifth one, I was ready to be done. But I wanted her to have three. So not two. So I did one more and now I'm back to knitting socks. <laughs> so which colors did you do for hers? Sorry, did I you had just a say picture that? inserted, but I don't know what oh, numbers okay. they were. So gotcha. I had some pastel y ones mm -hmm. that I had inserted pictures of. Excellent. Um, and then when when my mom opened them, my dad was more excited about them. <laughs> so I may need to get started on some for Father's Day because because <laughs> apparently it's a big thing. He really was super happy about those. All right, I am really excited about this finished object. Oh, yay. I finished my Americana quilt. I'm calling it an Americana quilt. It really could be anybody, but it's a red, white. Stuff? That would be really great. Red, white, and blue. This is a throw size. Let's see if we can open it up here. Sorry. <laughs> okay, wait, see how we can do. Is there a top? It's, it's a square one, so. Okay. Here we go. We'll just kind of hold okay. it on an angle. <laughs> but it's kind of, you know, you get the stars yeah, and stripes. Oh, you're going to hold it up for me? You're so good. It's the stars and stripes. See? It's so cute. I love it. Perfect. Oh, that's so cute. I love it so much. Anyway, it it's... Yep. Here you How go. tall is it? I'm going to put it down to the ground. It's 60. It's goes to here. Yeah, it was 60 by 60, but then I, I washed it after, so. Um, anyway, I um, ordered for, for about, a, I think two years, I was part of one of those Annie's Kits Fat Quarters Clubs. I don't know if you're familiar with Annie's Kits. They do kits for 
all kinds of fiber crafting, sewing, crocheting, knitting, I think probably cross stitch embroidery. I et cetera, just et looked at that and I was uh -huh. like, I should sign up for one of these or yeah. four of these. <laughs> I did the Fat Quarters kit for probably close to two years. And um, basically they send you a bundle of five Fat Quarters and a, a pattern for each month. And I got all of the fabrics that I used for the blue stars here and most of the fabrics for the red stripes. So I added in this polka dot and this smaller little polka dot, but these two fabrics, the fireworks and like the, what is that? Watermelon and lemonade one were included. Nice. But the thing that inspired me the most were this blue with the floral, the, teal the light the blue. Aqua. Yeah, this this one right here. Oh, it's hard to show. Polka dot with the floral and this one right here. It's got little flower pots and lemonade and cherries and things like that. I just thought it was so cute, so fun. And then the light blue one says things like, um, Let's see, corn on the cob, home sweet home. I can't see it. something about trip, sunshine, friends, s'mores, sprinklers. It's just so cute. Anyway, um, so I went to go look for other fabrics and I found, and this is not the kind of thing that I would normally be attracted to, but I found this print right here. That is little cats and dogs. And it's adorable. <laughs> and it's so cute. And with the stars in the background. And they also had it in navy. So that's the back of the quilt as well. It's just so adorable. Anyway, it was, I, I pieced the quilt in like a day and a half. And I started it, I think maybe June 28th or 29th last year. And on the 4th of July, I had it pieced and on my quilting frame so I could work on it. I have for a lot of years, and it's mostly just been coincidence, but now it I feel like I have to do it deliberately. For a lot of years, I have ended up working on quilts on the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. um, there were like three years in a row where I was binding a quilt, hand binding one. Mm -hmm. And it's just kind of like my afternoon thing. <laughs> we tend to celebrate in the morning and then in the evening. And so like mid-morning afternoon, I would sit down and... Do something on a quilt. Do something on a quilt with the air conditioner blowing. And so this one I started on the 4th of July. But then I got sick and I couldn't work on it. I had the center all quilted, but the all these borders, I have stripes of quilting going this way mm -hmm. down the borders. All of those weren't done yet. Um, and so I ended up just finally taking it down it was taking up space and I wasn't going to get, I wasn't going to be able to work on it. I couldn't even sit up. And so I recently just pulled it back out and finished it up really quickly and bound it. And I just think it's great. And I did the best corners I think I've ever done on a quilt. I am not great at corners, but that is a pretty good bound corner. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with that. Isn't it just the cutest? I love it. So I've got my um, red, white, and blue decorations up since Memorial Day is coming up this in a week. And they'll be up all summer long. I just put mine up yesterday. And so that's part of them. That's going to go. Love that's it. on my family room that couch. Me. I need to pull out my quilt. I know. Your red, white. Your red and white quilt. Oh, so beautiful. It. Gorgeous. I had this vision of having a new, like, lap throw quilt out for every season for every holiday that's what i want that was my vision so i started with um fourth of july so i have i have a patriotic one i have the top for a spring one that i designed mm -hmm. and i pieced never quilted i did do a valentine's one mm -hmm. and that's what i've got yep so <laughs> i have all the fabrics for a christmas one that i that i'm gonna do um and then, yeah, I want to have an autumn one. 
They're fun. They're so fun. I'm the same way. I want to have a quilt that goes up. I have decorations that go up in my family room for mm -hmm. every holiday. I want a quilt on the back of the couch that yep. goes for every holiday. What I would so. love is... Or, you know, season. Yeah. Yeah. I would love an armoire with mm -hmm. glass front doors that I can fold all of the quilts and you see the folds of the quilts stacked up yep. there. And then you pull out the one you want for the season, but they're still there as decor. But in order to do that, I'd have to build another wall somewhere to put. <laughs> that's my same problem. So that's why I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> same problem. So instead, they're like stashed all in weird places, all the quilts, and it's not as lovely that way. I have a TV cabinet that I'm like, maybe eventually I could put glass doors mm -hmm. on my TV cabinet. But then on one side, it's got like electronics in it. It wouldn't mm -hmm. be cute. I don't know. Who knows? We'll just... We'll just realize we don't get everything we want. <laughs> That's no, okay. No, no. There was one other thing I was going to say about quilts. Oh, I was going to talk about the Annie's kits. I just have to say, they used to send out those kits for the first um, probably eight months that I was doing it. They sent the patterns printed uh -huh. with them. And I made a lot more of those. After that, they changed to only, um, you had Digital. to basically, they didn't even email them to you. You had to go log into your account and find the pattern and print it out. Oh, and you know what? I stopped doing it as much. And I it wasn't only because of that, but I just realized I have so many fat quarters now. Holy cow, I had to be done. <laughs> I was obsessed with fat quarters for a long mm -hmm. time. And I love them. They're so fun. Great. I even built a little cabinet just to display and store those. I say display yes. because that's part of the Because it's the art. Right. It's like the yarns, <laughs> ball, ball yarn, or yes. stains of yarn. And after. 2020 is when I went through and went, okay, I, I can't do this and I don't have the room for that. I need to buy larger cuts and stop hoarding the minis, which is funny because I still do that with <laughs> yarn. <laughs> well, and for me, it's a lot like that where I tend to buy like or I used to tend to buy the single skeins of fingering weight yarn, mm -hmm. which is great. It's super fun. But now I'm like, no, That's I've got quality. to only buy... Or large sweater or sweater quantities or quantities for a specific project. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of where I am now too. All um, right. That was my Oh yeah, because that's what I did with Amy um and Jen's dandelion and dogwood, their latest yarn update. Oh I know so <sighs> gorgeous. You have to go check out Dandelion and Dogwood. Mm-hmm. Especially Instagram. if you're in the UK. Yeah. Well, you know if I still ordered it. <laughs> I know. But um, their yarn, their latest collection of um, early 90s, you know, just kind mm. of vintage retro thing, themes. They're so pretty. And I was looking at them like, oh, I want one of all of them. And then I went, okay, Deborah, don't do that. Buy a sweater quantity. So I bought a sweater quantity in one. And then I got... Um, one skein in the same weight of several others that I could put together with it to do color work or something That's a like great that. Idea. But I can also use them separately if I want to. But I'm like, I they need to be a cohesive, which all of their yarns went together, so that was easy. You know, I just picked my favorites and they all looked good together. So go check it out. They're gorgeous. Um, okay, I told you I've been going crazy with socks. I showed you previously the sock tubes because of my circular sock knitting machine. I cranked out a whole bunch, experimenting with tension, all of that. Um, and so I had all these sock tubes that I needed to add in, like divide up and make, you know, add cuffs, heels and toes. So I've just been working through those. And here is one I showed you last time, the tube, and I may have started on this. I don't know what I did with the label now, and so I can't remember the name of the colorway, but it's from Buxom Cat Knits. Buxom Cat? No, Buxom Cat Knits. Mm -hmm. Now this is a colorway that I bought, oh, it was probably 2018. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been a while, so I don't even know if she would have this colorway anyways, but it is, um, her base, even though it says fingering, to me feels more like sport weight, the one that I, I'm using. Um, it had more, it had like 115 or 120 grams instead of 100 grams, mm -hmm. but the yardage was still 
Um, it was like 398 yards or, or something. 400 or something for that. So it yeah. was, but it, I just cranked it on actually quite a, as, as tight as my machine could handle. Um, and th these are good for winter. I think these are really good winter socks because they're a little bit thicker, but still snug enough. Mm -hmm. So it was just a little difficult for my hands to knit because of the gauge, because I was trying to match the tighter gauge on the sock knitting machine, because I wanted them to be snug. If I had knit these by hand completely, I would have just gone down several stitches and not worried as much about that gauge, because it would have, um, I wouldn't have had as many stitches on the needle. So I finished this one and this color, it looks kind of, it is a crazy color, but in, in the camera, it's a little bit different, you know, higher contrast, higher contrast but yeah. it makes me think of Thanksgiving dinner. It does. I don't know why. Cranberry sauce, but still the Pumpkin. teal. Pumpkins. The teal, I don't know, just goes beautifully with it, but it doesn't make me think of any food, but it still makes me think of Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got the pair here. I made these for me. Those are going to be so, so cozy. Got that one. Did you have other finished objects? No, that's all the finished objects I have. So I'll show you the other socks. I had a pair of socks that I gave to mom for Mother's Day, but I forgot to take pictures. Oh. That's okay. That's I'm fine. Right. Okay, and then the next one was a sock tube from the my Unicorn Dew colorway. So great. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to do something a little different with the cuffs, heels, and toes, and not just do all the same color, which I have been doing, because it's easy. So um, I had a neon pink mini, and I went, oh, that works perfectly. And then I had a 20 gram mini that my friend Margaret had dyed that looks beautiful with it. I had some others that I was putting with it that looked nice, and I started knitting it, and it was too bold. So I ripped it out and I did it three times to try to get the right combination. Um, but I didn't want to just knit a solid toe. Following my friend Margaret who dyed this, knit by Gramsci, her lead, she is so good at using up all the bits and making the little minis, like the 20 gram minis, sometimes they're not quite enough to get cuffs, heels, and toes in. So she makes them stretch <laughs> by She'll do like add in a little stripe of one color, you know, contrasting color, which I did here um, so that she can kind of tie it in. But then she did at, we had a little knitting group one time where she was knitting socks and she didn't have enough to finish the toes. So she did a striped toe. So I did a striped toe <laughs> and I thought it was so cute. So I did two rows of each color and alternated that. I thought that's fun. Though it looks kind of crazy. These are just crazy socks. It looks kind of crazy with this colorway and the patterned toe. But then I did the same thing on the heel. I think they're great. I think they're fun, but they are a little bit crazy. They're like pastel, but zany. Yeah. I, I don't know why it makes me think of Dr. Seuss, like the the swirly, probably. It looks kind yeah, of swirly yeah, here. Probably. That's probably why it makes me think of that. So um, I have been experimenting with bind off and, you know, trying to get a good bind off. And I've done a sewn bind off before, but I wanted to try something different. So I still did a sewn bind off, but it is a tubular bind off for one by one rib. And it looks beautiful. It still sucks in nice and neat stretches perfectly but not mm -hmm. too much stretch and it wasn't that hard um it's the motion of it and the rhythm of it is very much like doing kitchener stitch mm. which to me my it just my brain sees that and it makes a lot of sense so um i didn't have a hard time with that so there is a video by roxy knits rox knits i'm trying to remember but it was just sewn one by one tubular bind off, I think she called it. I don't know, but I found that on YouTube and I watched that one quite a bit and it was really helpful. Um, but I wasn't thinking when I did these socks that I did a two by two rib, not a one by one rib, and I still did the same bind off. So it's kind of, <laughs> kind of messy, but it works. 
it's fine. I, I realized that after I bound it off, like this one just looks a little bit funny. What is it? And it's because it's not following that pattern. Mm -hmm. So, um, so these sock tubes are 64 stitches, but I like a 60 stitch sock because I have little chicken legs. And so <laughs> I tried to do it, you know, a tighter gauge to help with that. And they fit nicely. And these are for me. Um, and then I've got one more pair that I finished. This was my um, nowhere to go but up colorway. Let's see, I'll take this, it doesn't really matter. You can see it. I don't think you need a sock blocker to see this. I love that colorway. Once again, this one was a um, tighter gauge. And then I just did afterthought cuffs, heels and toes. And I have done so many of these, I could do it in my sleep now. <laughs> um, I just did all the same color because I wanted some that are a little bit more wearable mm -hmm. because, you know, kind of crazy. It's hard if you're going to see very much of it for it to match things. <laughs> so this one kind of blends really well, you know, just reads blue all the way, even though it's, you know, variegated colors. But um, because it was a tighter gauge and I was counting the rows for the foot that I typically do when I was done, I realized, oh, they're just a little bit too small because I did a tighter gauge on the sock tube, on the sock knitting machine. So these are for my daughter. Those are cute. But I need blue socks. So anyways, I only have one, one sock tube left that I'm working on and then they will be done which is good because I am going to be participating in um, Crazy or, uh, crazy Sock Lady, um, Kay Litton. I'm going to be participating in the summer sock camp, which I haven't done before. And so I'm really excited. I even bought the iron-on patch so that I could be legit. <laughs> so I wanted to have all of my socks done. And so I should have them all done in the next day. That's awesome. Yeah. Then you can start a whole bunch of new ones. Yes. <laughs> all right. Any other finished objects? That's all of my finished objects. And now I get to use them all, pack Yay. them away, clean up the house. I've been going <laughs> through like all of the project bags, getting all the scraps, all the needles, the notions, all the, ta you know, all the stuff, collecting, collecting them all together, trying to clean up. So it's nice when you can finally put them away. It is nice. I did that yesterday with my project bags and my needles. Yes. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about needle storage. So I just wanted to share some ideas or what I'm doing with my needles. I don't use um, interchangeable needles. I just have not found any that I really love. I like fixed circulars. And um, so I had started out with this needle case. And this I bought from Cuckoo 1876. Gaina is um, Tales from Cuckoo Land on YouTube. And she used to have a shop years ago and she would make things. And this is made out of an antique, I don't even know how to say it, the bread fabric where you make baguettes in it. Banaton? No, no Banaton the, is the, the, It's the, like a cloche. Uh, yeah, is I, it don't, a cloche? No, I don't remember. Anyway, I think that's what it is. It's an antique French cloth that you fold up to lay your baguettes in while they're proofing. Anyway, she had made this out of that and I just fell in love with it. It's got that little red stripe. And um, this is where all of my larger circumference um, cables are. So I've got um, my, like my 32 inch and 40 inch cables are all in that. And they, I am very emotionally attached to this. I don't know why. I mean, I, Gaina is one of my dearest friends, so that can be part of it. It's also the first needle case I had, and I started filling it up. I used to have like five needles in here, and now there's way too many in here. <laughs> um, I just used a pencil and wrote numbers for what sizes went in the different slots. And um, it's really, really packed. So I couldn't fit smaller circumference or DPNs in there. Um, 
I asked for Mother's Day one year and my family bought me this case, which I think is fun because it also looks French. It's got fabric that's, I, this is gonna wanna dump out because I'm holding it up. And I have my DPNs in here. And I mostly buy, I have um, some Haya Hayas and I have some Knit Picks car, or, uh, Knitter's Pride Zing. Carbons, oh. but mostly I use the Zings, the Knit Pro or Knitter, Knitter's Pride Zings. I really like those. And so that's where I keep my DPNs. But I literally had nothing for storing all of my shorter circumference cases in. And I got this case recently and it has so much room in it that I think I'm going to put all of my circulars in it. This is, I bought it on Etsy and it comes from the seller five to six, but it's spelled out. So F-I-V-E-T-O-S-I-X. She's located in Seattle and she makes the cutest needle cases. She makes the kind that are like this that I'll show you. She also makes DPN little project bags. So they're like, it's like a small little project pouch, like a sock size and it's got pockets inside for all your DPNs. Here, I'll click on one and see if I can make it showable to you. Okay, see, let's see if that will work like that. So you've got your DPNs in there, um, but you could also put other notions in there. And the little pockets are labeled with the numbers, if you see that. And that one's in the same fabric as this case that I got. They are a little pricey, but not for what you're getting. They're so well made. This has magnetic magnetic snaps on it. And then inside, it has all of these plastic zipper pouches sewn in. There's 12 pouches, and it comes with a sticker sheet of your different numbers of, of sizes. And so this one has all my um, nine inch, I have one nine inch, but mostly 16 and 24 inch cables of the different size needles in it. But there's so much room in these pouches that I may end up moving my other needles over. Isn't that a weird thing to be like emotionally attached to a needle case? I don't think so. Okay. I'm emotionally attached to a lot of things. I know. I've but been, isn't that just beautiful? today? I was thinking I should probably figure out different storage needles. These are so nice, and the zipper, the, the pouches are a heavy duty. They're not mm -hmm. a, you know, they're not a baggy. They're a, a heavier duty plastic pouch with a good um, zipper on them. The biggest struggle I have, I keep all of mine in the original needle case, and I hate that <laughs> because it'll say on there the cable size. And 22, 24 to 36 inch, you have to like take them out and compare or mm -hmm. 32 to 40. You can tell easily 24 to 40, but if I want something on a specific cable and I, then I have to do more figuring out of the size. Mm -hmm. And if you have them all together, like all my sixes are in here, yeah. my, you know, and that's where my I problem is the time. last, the last several needles I have purchased, I've ordered on Amazon and they have come with no label whatsoever on them. Oh, they, they're in a chow goo envelope, like there's no package, label. but there's no, they don't have any price sticker or whatever. Uh -huh. Most of the, uh, you know, the needles that I buy at, for example, Knit and Pretty are, you know, my local yarn store that uh -huh. I like to go to. She's got her labels on there, her own price tags on there, and those say the size on them. But the ones I just recently purchased, there's no size. So I had to actually take them out of the envelope and look, and at, look the, at the needle to see, make huh. sure that I had received the proper size. Yeah, my needle case is like the, but I I have noticed that their um, packaging did change yeah. recently because I did get some like that. Because mm -hmm. previously it was on the card that was inside. Yeah, and they're not anymore. The packaging of the mm -hmm. needles. So, but I have mine in a wooden, like, like toolbox kind of thing. Yeah. It's divided down the center with a handle. It's wooden and it has slots that are just the right That's width so of the needle cases. And so one size is are the circulars and the other side are DPNs and mm -hmm. interchangeables. That's really nice to have them still in their little envelopes. I, I haven't done that, 
but I appreciate that you do because but, then I borrow a needle from you <laughs> occasionally. But I'm trying I, to fill in my I holes. look at these and I think, oh, I really like that. And then I think, would I be happier with that? I think I'm, I think yeah, I'm you happy have... with what I have, except for when the cases, like you open and close and open and close and open and close and they no oh, longer yeah. stick. So then mm -hmm. I'm taping them closed. I am one that I like original packaging. Yeah. I keep things in their original packaging a lot. I, I really like it. But I have a little pretty. cart next to my chair in my sewing room. And that's where I keep all my needles and my notions, tins mm -hmm. and things like that. And I wouldn't be able to fit something like that. It, mm -hmm. I, I, it just yeah, would become would... a huge mess. Yeah. So this is perfect for me. I just think it's fun to see different ways yeah. that people store things. I've seen so many different types of storage. And I just yeah. thought maybe you guys would be interested in seeing well, then the ones some... that I have found and enjoy. Yeah, there's some that I've seen where they have like it hangs on the back of a door or mm -hmm. something and you slide your cables through the needles yeah. through and, and so they they're just hang. kind of hanging yeah that one would drive me me too crazy. it would not work for me i would not enjoy that what i like about this is that you can take it with you and you have all of your needles with yep. you so if you're like oh i don't have that well, needle. oh well i do i can take these three with me and have all but, my needles well you could if you put those together <laughs> yeah, yeah. with this whereas with mine i've got this big you know Thing. Yeah, I can't take them all with me. It's really nice because I'll often be like, "Hey, go grab my needle case for mm -hmm. me to one of my kids," I'm, and they just yeah, I I like that. I'm thinking for my DPNs that I do now. I also have multiples in different types of needle DPNs, like mm -hmm. some are wooden, you know, bamboo, some are metal. And I ended up paring down a lot of my needles because I did too, but I de-stashed. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm like, now I know what, what it is like. that I like. And so I have two sets in two different sizes of DPNs, but most of my DPNs, I have one set. I, I know what I like, and mm -hmm. it's just this little thing of DPNs. Um, and it's just, it works out really well. Mm -hmm. Okay, it does so. make me think. I'm just thinking, okay, how would I feel about this? Do I want to change? Do I want to... <laughs> you don't have to change anything. No, because well, this morning I was thinking, oh, I kind of would like to figure something out. Yeah. But I want, the, the big hang up is the cable size. The cable length. That's right. my thing. But I don't want to have a different one for every cable length. You know, like. I'm to the point, though. Like, a 16 and a 24, you can just glance at that and tell the difference. Yeah. Very easily. A 32 and a 40 is a little bit different. But here, mm -hmm. let me show you the I'm difference. I'm just thinking, like, 24 to 32 and 32 And I don't use a lot of 32s. I have almost no 32s. See, and I have quite a few 32s. Yeah, that makes sense for you. So, if I, one of the things you can tell, if I pick up a 16-inch needle, That's this is what it looks like. It's just a U. Yeah. Here it goes, okay. A 24, I can make a loop. Yeah. A 16, I wouldn't make a you loop. You can't make a double loop with that. Not a double loop, make one a loop. single loop. So it's really easy to tell the difference between those. And then I don't really buy, because I don't have, like you would need a 32 for making sweaters and stuff. Mm -hmm. But there is not a measurement on my body that is 32 inches. Yeah, I use so. 32 for socks and I use 32 for sweaters mm -hmm. a lot, so. Yeah, and I use 40s. So it just whatever works for you. Um, I did find, I don't own a single set of nine US nines. Oh, well now you know. Now you I know I have a hole. Some. And then I don't own any zeros. And I think I am going to get some DPNs and, um, anyway, yeah, get, get some zeros mm -hmm. just because I want to have that option for changing gauge. Well, I discovered anyway. today that the needle I have the most of, I have like six US size six needles. Yeah, I have quite a bit um, of sixes. That are 32 or 40 inch cables. Yeah. The ones I, I for me, it's Magic Loop size one. I mean, I have got probably nine pair. Well, I thought I had 40 most of inch. Those, but I have There's sixes four, in five, six. There's at least six right here, yeah. just in this case. I have a lot of sixes as well. I think what happens is I have them on a project, and yeah. I'm, I'm like, I go to get them, I'm like, oh, I don't have it. So then I order another pair or go buy yeah. it, and then I. After a while, I've wrapped round them all up, and I still have some on projects right mm -hmm. now. So when I'm done, I'll probably find out. <laughs> well, because more. sixes are really calm. I mean, you using mm -hmm. DK weight or yeah. even some of your fingering weight, like shawls and so yeah. on, are using sixes and lots of so sweaters and so on often use. I have a lot of fives as well. In fact, I think I might have more fives than sixes. But anyway, I just thought that might be interesting for everybody to see. I'd yeah, love I like to. That. I'd love to know what kinds of storage you like. I think the ones you were talking about where they're hanging on the wall, I think that's really good for people who are very visual and mm -hmm. want to be able to just glance and see. Yeah. Um, 
And those are the same kind of people who are going to like to have their, their um, supplies out and organized yeah. where they're going to visually see them to get that inspiration. And that yeah. makes sense to yeah, me. Yeah, I understand that's, that. If that's your style. Yeah, yeah, I like things packed away. I like them extremely orderly. I like them clearly identified. Mm -hmm. I'm like very, and that's you why. You file your belongings, basically. I do, yeah, yeah. I do. So my needles are filed. <laughs> yeah. It's it's essentially a filing cabinet kind of thing <laughs> situation. Yeah, makes sense to me. Oh, well, that was fun. Okay, works Thanks. in progress. Okay, here I'll show back to socks. Yay. I told you I had one sock tube left. This one, was a skein that was dyed for me by, oh, I, that's I'm like, what's different in the light? I've been hitting on this one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, because I, I did that before with one pair. Um, this one is called, oh, where's my tag? Oh, it's in this. Just a minute. Let me get it out. That's such a cute bag. It reminds me of that fabric that I was just showing on my quilt. So where the lost things go. This is a 70-30 um, superwash um, merino nylon base and um, it was dyed for me by my friend Amanda as part of a Christmas swap That's that we so did. so cute. She did a whole Disney theme of my favorite Disney movies and characters which was really really sweet of her and so I've been holding on to this one and since this blue sock this blue pair didn't work for me uh, I have another That's one to fun. go for so I am, I did the, I divided them in half and I did the cuffs already and I'm working on toes and then I'll do the heels and then all of my sock tubes and sock projects will be done and I can start fresh. I love it. Starting fresh feels so great. <sighs> I love it. And these, I'm just doing all the same color because it'll just be very wearable and neutral and something that I, I definitely am lacking simplicity in a lot of my knits mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's something that I'm working on but it's not always something that's as exciting to make but mm -hmm. it's something that I need so I so this one once again 64 stitches um, I did a tighter gauge um, on this one and I don't remember what the gauge was I had it written down at one point but see here I keep it in here <laughs> always keep it in here um, yeah, and you can see where they used mm -hmm. to have the sizing on it, but then like when you would buy it, it would say it on there as well. Mm -hmm. But they, the packaging doesn't have this anymore. On and the that's a ones. sticker, isn't it? Yeah, it is a sticker. Yeah, and they didn't have that those stickers. Anymore. But you can see that this one doesn't like staying closed. It doesn't have any stickiness left on it. Um, Maybe you need to attach Velcro to your... Your cases. I'm not joking. Like that could, I could work. I could. Just the stick on Velcro. <laughs> so I do. I mean, I've had this for years, mm -hmm. and I keep them. I I I forgot to look up who the bag maker was. Country so... Daydreamer Knits, I think. Oh my gosh! It's no, so no, cute. I got it wrong. Oh, I feel so bad now that I don't know because there's not a label on it. There's not a bag maker oh. label on it, and it. I love this one. So Did you get much. it on? I bought it on Etsy, and it was Etsy. on YouTube. <sighs> yeah, Vintage Daydreamer Knits. I bought um, a carved <laughs> stitch marker. So cute. I love this one. It's so darling. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Looks um, like it belongs in the fairy garden. <laughs> It's gonna make me crazy. Okay, well, if you're watching this and you're the maker, please comment below <laughs> and I'll put it in show notes because oh. now I cannot remember. Anyways, so um, not a whole lot of details, but it does require two needles to split your sock tubes into two mm -hmm. so that you can catch the stitches. I didn't actually, I just had it on one needle and I took it out and you know I had live stitches that were sitting there, but it wasn't that big of a deal for me to go pick them up later when I went out and grabbed another set of needles. Um, but that's one thing I know that that worries people about doing sock tubes is like, how do you divide them up? Um, and I will share something with you a little bit later about that. In, in the very end in my shop, up, shop update news. So. Beautiful. Almost done, almost done. 
This is your last one, you said, right? Your last, last pair? Sock tube. After that, I am going to be doing full socks on my sock knitting machine, but I wanted to get, like, I needed to get the practice down and mm -hmm. finish using the tubes that I already had. So, That's so and great. then all my hand knitting socks will be things that I wouldn't do on my sock mm -hmm. knitting machine. Lovely. I have some sock tubes that we did together or that you gave yeah. me that I need to. Emily cranked one of them. I did, and you cranked the other one. Yep. And now I need to knit them. All right. I'm working on the Bloom Your Heart Out shawl. The lighting's changed. You can see the reflection of my blinds more Do than I need before. To change it? I don't know. I'm getting a glare right off my car. <laughs> it just blinded me. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, just, just close that one. Oh, that's so much better. Okay. Ah, I can see. I don't know if it would be better <laughs> we'll see. showing this, but you it can It might see. not, but here we go. Bloom your heart out. And this is by Inez Sang, or Inez. It's I-N-E-S-E. It's so gorgeous. I just cannot get over the beauty of this design. And I showed last time that I was going to knit this and I had started on it and I was using different yarns and I didn't like it and I ripped it out and I started again and I love it. And these are the colors that I'm using. And I am, I'm really getting close to being done. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so isn't that beautiful? And that pink, look at the, the uh, lace here. It's gonna be so much more beautiful, of course, blocked. But these, I feel like these are almost like little, like cathedral windows, the shape of them. Oh, okay. With the bunches of flowers in them. This is fun because um, I was able to combine yarn, again, from our friend Margaret, that she had dyed um, this one for my birthday. Um, I want to say it was 2020. I think it was 2020 when she gave me this one. And then we did a, um, advent exchange with some friends and she made me an advent calendar. And this bluey purpley one was the full skein that I got on Christmas day. And it was a sock set. Um, with a, a darker like navy blue mm -hmm. mini as well but these two went together so well and this other yarn um, was the color parchment and it was one that I had done for my um, Americana collection a couple of years ago last year yeah it was yeah, last year. it was last year anyway so I am almost done I have finished with this pink yarn and I have to say so again, one of, you know, kind of one of a kind skeins, luckily three of a kind skeins because I ran out of this yarn right here. And I said, oh no, what am I gonna do? I've done all of this and it's not like I could just, oh, we'll just skip the rest of that part. I mean, it's yeah. missing. It's very clearly missing part of that design if I don't do it. And Margaret had scraps left over from something that she had made with the same yarn that she was able to give me so I could finish it out. And little, and then, little balls. Two tiny little balls. And I made, managed to get that last little bit out of it. I, I didn't know if I was gonna make it. In fact, here's what I have. Let's see if I can find what I've got left in here. This much. That's how much is left. That's it. Oh gracious, my notions tin is dumping out everywhere. Oh. But I can say um, I have had some adventures with this. First in the changing colors and starting again. Second, I was in, where was I? I think I was in this lace panel still, but I was just a little bit farther down. When, um, when I looked down and I was just knitting along, and all of a sudden I felt less drag you know, on my cord and I looked down and my cord had severed from the needle and it had been about this far that I had kept knitting without realizing it because yeah. I still felt the needle in my hand. So I just kept going. And so there were about this many stitches that were, uh, they were just live, just hanging there. Um, and you know, it's, it's in a fairly complex lace pattern and I was able to salvage it and save everything. 
Whew, that was close. And then running out of yarn. Anyway, it's been kind of a saga, but it's so beautiful. And it's going to be even more beautiful when it's blocked. And you can see the glory of this lace knitting. We just saw it's Abby. Beautiful. I know. Peeking in the window here. <laughs> sneaking in back here. <laughs> so anyway, oh, it's so Oh, it's it just is. so gorgeous. It's a really beautiful design. It is design. a beautiful design. And I have to say, this pattern is very well written, too. I was looking, and some of her other shawls are just as gorgeous. I mean, she is quite the designer. Um, she gives you written and charted instructions. She gives you stitch counts at the end of every right side row. That's she gives nice. you all the charts, and I prefer charts, and the charts are color-coded so you know what to um, work. The only problem I had, oh, this was the other part of the saga. On one of the charts, I won't, I won't show it, but it, it has, it's a 70-stitch long chart, and it very clearly says, both in the written instructions and at the top of the page of the chart, this one says, work row 1 through 34 of chart 1, one time work row 35 through 70 of chart one for a total of nine times. So basically you're doing your increases and then you get to a certain point and you just do this part of the chart over and over again. It's this section. Well, mm -hmm. guess what I did the first time through on the other yarn, thankfully. I only did that chart one time. So basically I got to like here and then I went on to the next charts. And you're like, this is a tiny and I'm like, Show. why is this so little like this is gonna be itty bitty yeah I had missed I think we figured it out and it was 200 what was it 280 rows yeah <laughs> that, that was not her fault Makes that was my fault difference <laughs> in the show. repeat yeah because it's three it's uh 35 times times eight is what I had missed so you that's would not have run out of yarn no I would you <laughs> anyway so that was the other saga but none of those things had anything to do with Aini Sang, who is an amazing designer, and I definitely want to make more of her things. You have Very to look pretty. at her shawls. They are gorgeous. All right. Don't dump out. Okay. There we go. Here we go. With the <laughs> Stash Dive Raglan Saga. See, once again, I've got my needles. I just keep those with... Me. Um, I'll have quite a few US size sevens, it looks like. <laughs> okay, this is the Stash Dive Raglan by Summer Lee. And I've been working on this since pretty much the beginning of time. Not really. Last year. <laughs> I've been working on it for a while. So I haven't shown it. I didn't show it the last time or maybe the time before because, you know, like you've heard about it a lot. I'm not done with it yet. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> there is light at the end of the tunnel. So I finished the second sleeve and I joined it together onto the body. And it has you, okay. Do you need help? I'm trying to show under the arm here. So under the arm, it has you join it onto the body and cast on stitches and you end up with this big opening mm -hmm. under the arm which then you've got all the live stitches held on you know i've got them on waist yarn so there's a whole bunch of like ends here but what you do is you put those stitches on needles and you graft it closed so it's kitchener to closed and i've done that on one side here so you can see that i left the other side open so you could see the difference there mm -hmm. but that turned out really nice. I like that method. I haven't done that. I haven't done a ton of sweaters, so. Um, oh boy, where's my needle ends? <laughs> I keep doing this and then I lose a lot of stitches because it's on a 40 inch cable, but it's it's barely on the 40 inch cable. Um, it's not. Okay. So I've joined it together you knit a couple of inches just plain and then you start doing decreases so i mentioned before that i've done my sleeves differently 
so they're not as long. I made them three quarter inch length or three quarter length. <laughs> like but three -quarter I also, yeah. But I also didn't make them as wide because her picture does not look like balloon bishop sleeves. But the instructions, and when I started knitting it, that's what it looked like. So then I went and looked at other projects that people had made and people were commenting that, that they they were getting big balloon sleeves and people had adjusted it to make it more narrow, but most of them that had adjusted it did it top down and just didn't do any increases. Um, yeah, they just knit it straight. So I was trying to figure that out the other way. What would that look like? Well, what it means is that when I joined together with the body and I start doing the decreases, I have different numbers on the sleeves mm -hmm. than the pattern calls for. And so I had to figure out the math of how to decrease the sleeves versus the, you know, at a different rate than the front and the back portion of it. And I was trying to figure out all the stitch counts and what that would look like. And in the end, I finally made myself a little chart like this. <laughs> I did every decrease round and the numbers of what it would be on the body and then what it needed to be on the sleeves in order to decrease properly. And I had like, skip here, don't decrease here, don't decrease here, you know, like which rows to not decrease, which rows to decrease so that I could end up with the correct stitches at the end. So what I did is I actually worked backwards. This was the stitch count that I needed at the end, and then I worked this way to see. That's a good decreases. idea, that's a good way to do it. So I have done this, uh, 11 of my 22 decrease rounds. And after that, then I will be doing a mm, cowl. Cowl? I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> I don't know why I thought you were talking. To me. A cowl Sorry. neck. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. it is. Um, so I'm kind of just done with this sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm burned out on all of the yarn changes and stuff. So I'm just trying to get it done. Just yeah. trying to finish it now. Um, but I realized with that I wasn't super smart when I chose to do the ribbing in a solid one. And then I wanted to do, you know, I wanted them all to look the same. Well, I, I only had a 20 gram mini of this oh. yarn that I used, which is not enough to do the ribbing for the bottom and the sleeves and a big cowl. So I dyed another 20 gram mini that looks very similar. I didn't dye this one. This one was from Kate Selena mini that was a gift to me from a friend. So I just looked at the colors and made kind of my own, but it looks, similar enough. Um, why I didn't do more than 20 grams, I don't know, because I, still not enough. So this dash dive raglan, I have dyed several skeins for <laughs> where I see gaps that I needed. So this is the rest of the 20 gram mini that I had dyed and it won't be enough for the cowl. So I just did another one similar enough. It won't, you know, it'll, it'll work. Cause I just, I, I just played around with it, didn't write anything down. So once again, did the same kind of thing, looked at the colors. What did I use? Similar <laughs> enough. Um, so when I'm done, when I'm completely done, I'm gonna turn this inside out and take a picture of all the ends on the inside because there are so many color changes and I left them hanging, you know, quite a bit because you've woven them in as you've gone. Yes, I, I weave them in as I go, because if not, this would sit here until the end of time. <laughs> um, but I, I kind of leave them long because then after you block, you know how sometimes it pulls it and, and I don't want it flipping through to the outside and after I block it, I can trim them down shorter. But also it's just kind of fun to see, like I look in and there are a million ends in there. So that'll be fun to see. But I was worried about the proportions of this because once again, let's hold it up and see the proportions. Like the body um, looks a lot more wide in proportion to the sleeves that I made more narrow. And I'm like, I'm gonna have this bulky sweater and then more narrow sleeves. But in the end, I think, cause I can't really, I could, I could try it on, but I didn't switch over to like 
waist yarn to put it on, but doing it bottom up is harder to try on. Mm -hmm. And by the time I get to a point where I really should and could try it on, I'm already invested so much in all these weaving and events that it is what it is. It is. <laughs> so when I'm done, like it or not, that's what the sweater is. <laughs> but I think, cause I had, I had kind of held it up and pulled it out and met, you mm -hmm. know, I'm like, I think that this will be good, but I'm, I'm liking, you know, I like the effect that it has, but it has been an investment in time because I can't just take this with me and work on it yeah. somewhere. It is a sit down, invest some time into it. Cause you have to get in the flow again of the color changing and ma yarn management and all of that. And I don't know. By the time I get into it, it's like, oh, well, it's time to put it down. So I don't work on it a whole lot, but my goal is to finish it in the next two weeks. So that's my Ooh. goal. We'll see if I can do that. But that's what I, I really want to do because I'm trying to get all projects off of the needles. It, they won't all be off because I'm starting for sock summer camp. But I may not start that until maybe if I can finish that in two weeks, I might start in two weeks instead of at the end of this week. So um, I would say this pattern is fun. Like it's, it's a fun concept. It's a fun way to use scraps, but it doesn't use as many scraps as I had hoped, especially because I dyed more. Also, <laughs> um, I don't think that it is as clear as it could be in um, some of the things where it's kind of like divide something, like decreases evenly among stitches or whatever. Like, okay, I have to go figure out where to decrease. I don't remember if that's exactly what it was, but there mm. are things kind of like that throughout it. Um, I think that it would be uh, much more enjoyable doing it top down instead of bottom up because then I could try it on as I go and make adjustments there. And also it seems to me though, I could be wrong that what she has pictured as far as the finished object is not quite the same as what the written instructions give you like sleeves, sleeve wise, like how wide the sleeves are, that kind of thing. Um, so you definitely want, I think anytime you're doing a pattern, you want to definitely look at other pictures of people yeah. who have knit the same pattern and yeah. see. So, yeah. but I do love the concept, the idea of it. It's fun. And she has a lot of great tips on changing out your yarns, choosing colors. So there's things that I really like about it there. So I just thought I'd let you know, it's not like a super easy grab and go kind of thing. And off you go. It's, it's more involved than I had anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> but you've stuck with it. So I really want it. it I'm excited about it. I'm yeah. excited to have it. I know it's one that if it fits as I'm hoping or close to it, I will wear it a lot. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. All right. I'm also knitting a sweater and I just fell in love with this yarn. I love that one. And oh, it's Yellow Brick Road. Here we come. Okay, our sister Alexis just cracked us up. So I bought this yarn at the Great Basin Fiber Arts Fair, and it is from Yarn Cafe Creations, Christy. And this is the green tea colorway. And by the way, how cute is her ball band is a yeah like drink what do you call those a coffee cup a coffee uh, it's cozy. a it's a it's a sleeve yes but what's the word it's it's a, it's like a snarf or a sarf or a, something like that is the name of this oh i don't know my kids would know it I'm not anyway smart enough for that but it's just so cute <laughs> i think it's called like a oh anyway doesn't matter. So this gorgeous, gorgeous emeraldy green, so beautiful. And I'm knitting the Orlea cardigan. And this is by Malloray Designs. This is the picture on the pattern. I'm gonna show you another picture on my phone to kind of give you a, I, okay. Cooperate, please. All right, there you go, see that. You can see that the um, sleeves are stockinette. The whole body of the cardigan is in lace. 
and then the sleeves are in stockinette. And this is also knit from the bottom up, which I is, and again, not my favorite. Um, it's harder to judge, but I, it is a cardigan. So it's not quite like the fit. I don't know if I'm trying, if I'm explaining that well. It's got a little more give when you're in a cardigan, oh, um, yeah, which I yeah. tend to wear open. And this is hard because I'm now working on the fronts, like I've divided. And so, you know, this side is much longer than the rest, but here we go. Hold that up there. That lace. And of course it's very crumply because it's not blocked. This is a delicate, isn't it beautiful? Light, airy kind of, that'll be nice. This all over leafy lace pattern. One thing I really, oh, beautiful with the green. isn't it gorgeous? One thing that oh, I really love, oh yes, our sister. When I showed her the yarn that I bought and I said, look at this yarn. And she saw all this green yarn. She goes, oh, do you know what the name of that yarn should be? Ye follow the yellow brick road. No, she just said, oh, yellow brick road. And Deborah and I are like, what? Okay. <laughs> and she goes, because the yellow brick road leads to the Emerald City. <laughs> We're like, but why don't you just call it Emerald City? <laughs> Anyway. Just, but the whole point of the whole movie is the yellow brick road leads you to the emerald city so it should be called yellow brick road she's fun it was she's great she's the one that did the dance in the sweater she's, yes she's, she's a cracker lots of fun so anyway it's just so pretty it's a little bit of a shorter in the body i mean most of the sweaters i make are you know tunic length this one is just kind of a you know waist length a little bit longer than waist length um cardigan and I am loving it. I have to say, okay, let's talk about the pattern a little bit. This, I would say this is an advanced knitting pattern. And the reason for that, um, twofold. First of all, the lace is only charted. It is not written out. So um, I, again, love a chart and that's my preference. But one of the good things about having written and charts is that if there's ever a question about how a chart fits within the construction of a sweater, you have a written instruction to go back to, to verify and make sure you're judging it correctly. The second thing is, is that once she establishes that lace pattern, she does not give you any further direction on how to fit the lace pattern within your decreases and shaping for the rest of the sweater. Figure it out yourself. You just have to know. So her instructions will be something along the lines of, um, you know, uh, for the row, uh, you know, bind off five stitches, knit in pattern, two last three stitches, and then do your neckline decrease. Um, which, you know, if you are a, a good lace knitter, you can figure that out. But you have to understand with lace, it's all about keeping your proper stitch count. And so therefore, your decreases and your yarn overs have to balance each other out to keep your proper stitch count. So every time that you're doing a decrease, you're having to look and say, am I decreasing in a place where there would be a yarn over here to account for that decrease that's next over? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're having yep. to constantly count that. And I am a pretty accomplished lace knitter, but I have still ended up off a stitch or two here and there. I'm not that worried about it as long as I'm getting really close to it. If you're in within one or two stitches um, it, at different markers throughout your shaping, you're gonna be just fine. But it is not necessarily one that's gonna be something that, I wouldn't recommend this to um, a more beginner lace knitter. Mm -hmm. You would really have to, to be, it's 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 what I'm having to pay close attention to now that I'm doing the shaping. Okay. Once you're in, I mean, in the body, it's like you cast on your stitches, you do your ribbing, you change your needle size. Now just work lace, you know, for a big long rectangle. But now that I'm doing all the the decreases and knitting fronts and things like that, binding off um, armholes and stuff, it's definitely taking a lot more of my attention. That being said, I cast this on what two weeks ago. Yep. So I'm, and I've done a lot of work on my shawl in the meantime, and on a secret project that I can't share. And so all of those things, I'm still zooming through this. Um, the nice thing about this lace pattern and the chart, like you said, once you get going, you've done any decreases or increases or yeah. whatever, you just keep going. Stockinette can get kind of tedious and boring. Yes. 
but this is one where it gives you something to do, but it can also become just um, a little, not always completely mindless, but you're just doing the same thing again and again yeah. and again and again and again, even though it gives you some different stitches. So it seems like it's enough to keep your brain engaged enough, mm -hmm. but not too much that... Now it is a 24 row lace pattern, uh -huh. but it's it's because parts of it are staggered. You know, you've got yeah. your two leaf sections. And so if you understand how the leaf sections relate to each other, then really you're only memorizing 12 rows, not 24. Now everybody's different. Some people, they want every row, everything written out completely. Yes. Um, and some people want things charted. Some people want both. But the nice thing about a chart, oh, I can't show the chart, is that it essentially gives you a picture of what you're making. It's very visual. And so I can show a chart you maybe see from one of my patterns. see a picture of it. And like, okay, I know what I'm supposed to be creating. Exactly. And so it helps you to catch if things are off because does it match the picture? I don't know. So I'll show a chart from one of my patterns because I think it's valuable to show it talking about it. So here's one of the charts from one of my patterns. And literally you've got a visual right there of your decreases, your yarn overs. You can see it's creating you can, certain yep. shapes. Mm -hmm. And so being somebody, I am definitely somebody who wants to see the big picture. So I want to not only know what stitch I am making, but how it fits in with all the other stitches mm -hmm. around it. And therefore I can catch my mistakes. If I only know the stitch I'm supposed to make, and how do I know if I messed up? You don't know Does how that, it yeah. relates to the other stitches. Mm -hmm. So it's much harder to find mistakes or even if you've yes. made a mistake. That's why I prefer charted crochet as well. It's, mm -hmm. it's again, a visual thing that helps me to, to see how it all fits together. Yeah, see, and I could not follow a crochet pattern to save my life until I learned about how to read a crochet chart. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I was like, once you can eat, this is easy. the interesting thing is that for me, learning how to read a crochet chart uh -huh. meant that when I went back and looked at crochet patterns, mm -hmm. I could visualize it in my head. Mm -hmm. Even if that pattern didn't have a chart, I could chart it in my mind and to a certain extent. So. Yeah, Sandra Paul from Cherry Heart Designs, mm -hmm. her, her, uh, one of her patterns that I was making was charted and I was like, I don't know how to read this. And you showed me how, and after that, it was it smooth clicked. sailing. Yeah. It, it was great, great. So I always thought I'm just terrible at crochet and I just realized, no, I just, I need the chart. I'm just so excited for this sweater though. I haven't had anything green like this. And this used to be like years and years ago, like when I was in high school and college, this was my favorite color. I wore this all oh, the time. Oh, you did. I liked how it brought out my eyes. I have light green eyes and I just feel like I have like greenish gray eyes mm -hmm. and I felt like it brought out the green. And I just really like it, so I'm excited. It's going to be very pretty. It's a and color. it's for my size. It's taking 400 grams of yarn. Now that's how many it says it's going to take. I bought six skeins of yarn because I hadn't picked a pattern at the mm -hmm. time. And usually for like one of these big long tunic length cardigans that I've been making, it takes 2,400 yards roughly for mm -hmm. a, a cardigan like that for me. Um, and so for this one, I, I bought that much, but I think I'm only going to need four skeins. I know, and you have your bag and I've got mine. And it's These a reversible the... bag. So <laughs> I've got mine the other way. <laughs> I love it. You made this for me. I did. I love it. Yeah, because once again, I follow everything Margaret does. And she <laughs> made a bag using a kitchen like tea towel kind of. From Target, right? From Target. And I was like, that's brilliant. <laughs> and then I found a bag or some towels that I really liked and I thought it was so pretty. And then I went and found fabric to match. That's great. Coordinated. It's nice because you've got that that little bit heavier weight from the yeah. towel that gives you a little more body. She's so smart. She I copy brilliant. everything she does. I just want to be her. <laughs> There's a lot of people I want to be. I also like me, so I want to be me. <laughs> um, okay. Because I was burned out on socks... And the sweater is non-portable, but I was going on a little weekend getaway. I was like, oh, I need a project to take with me and I don't have a project. And I really wanted to just finish projects, not start a new one. So I was really start smart and I started a sweater. <laughs> so <laughs> You were smart. It was a brilliant move. <laughs> once again, 
wanting to be Margaret. <laughs> she knit a beautiful sweater in a gorgeous green mm -hmm. um, that she had posted on her Instagram. And I saw it here. She, she We're in a local knitting group and um, she showed it in our on our knit night. And she was almost done with it. And I was like, oh, that's so pretty. And then she posted a picture of it the next day or the day after mm -hmm. that of it done. And thought, Gorgeous. And that day, Emily cast on the same sweater. And the mm -hmm. next day, I pulled out yarn for mine, but I didn't cast on for a bit. <laughs> but it's the Kalia P.O. Oh, do I have the first page of Let it here? I think I have it right here. Excellent. Yeah, I can show this one. Excellent. By Espace Trico. Espace Trico? Espace Trico. I don't know. Um, so Calliope if you don't know is an instrument and it's like organ pipes kind of thing and it's what you would hear coming down the road old time when the circus was coming into town mm -hmm. um and it's kind of fun and i was like why did she call it that but i think i'm guessing the organ pipes like the the ribbing and it's all got a long rib in the yeah, sleeve yeah. cuff as well um so this pattern calls for you to um, hold two strands of yarn together, a fingering weight yarn and a lace weight mohair. And I did that. Is that what it calls for? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Margaret did not do that. You didn't do no, that. No, I did mine in a DK that was already floofy. Yes, and Margaret did hers in a DK. Um, but I was looking through what do I have yarn that I've been wanting to use that I have enough for because I am doing the size one and it doesn't call for a lot. It only calls for um, two skeins of the sock yarn or fingering weight yarn and two skeins of the mohair, um, the 50 gram balls of mohair. And I had these three skeins of yarn that I had purchased previously from Artistic Lily, who is just announced recently that she's no longer dying Aww. yarn. And this one is called Tropical Vibe. And I love this one. I've been holding on to it. I'm like, this is the perfect time for me to use it. I had a lot and I was like, do I want to do a, you know, solid or tonal colorway? And I had a whole bunch of options pulled out. But then I decided I want to go for something super fun and colorful. So I did this, but then what mohair did I want to use? And so I had like a bare undyed one. I had a lot of options that I'd pulled out. I have my lemon one. I had a banana. So two different yellows. I had lime pulled out mint, which is the teal. And then I dyed a new color way frambois, <laughs> oh, which is this hot pink. And I decided that's what I'm going to put together. That was kind of crazy pairing there because a lot of times you pick one that just seems to like maybe blend with it. This doesn't blend necessarily in the same way. It, it changes it a lot and so I thought it's going to be risky but I did a swatch for a gauge swatch also to see if I would like what it creates and so I did. I loved it and I cast on and I've got oh look how cute this I'm actually working on the ribbing on the bottom right now. I am alternating skeins with, um, oh, what's the method? I just forgot. Helical. Yeah, helical knitting. It's so easy to do that, as, mm -hmm. you know, if you're just doing stocking knit. But I love the effect that this gives. It's so different. Now, if you look at this up close and look at individual stitches, you can see the pink held with something, but from a distance, overall, it just reads pink. But to me, it looks like Barbie, candy, ice cream, 80s. So cupcakes with sprinkles. Pretty much. Exactly what you love. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> it could so not be any more perfect. I was not a pink girl for ever. But pink has come, become my favorite. Like, I always go to pink. And, oh, when I was vending and one customer was asking if I had a certain color. And I'm like, I don't really dye browns. And, you know, I dye bright, colorful things. And I'm like, especially pink. She's like, I know. Like, <laughs> pink is 
the colors. I will always die. Like, I, I love it. Love pink. So anyways, I really love this, but I want to try next doing um, this color or almost any mohair with a bare undyed yarn mm. and see what it does. I, I want to find if I can find like a section of stitches where it, it has, how can I get close enough? Oh, you just can't see it on here. It has such an interesting look to it. It's where, kind of like almost heathered. Yeah, I, I don't know. It just looks so fun whenever I get to a stitch where, you know, it's, where it's the undyed yarn, undyed portion, and hold it with the pink. I just think it looks so neat that I'd like to try knitting something with just that. Mm, so, it's so soft, too. Um, I did add some extra length. I asked Margaret to measure her sweater. She made some adjustments on her. She added like three inches mm -hmm. to what the pattern said, I believe. And she did a split hem, so the back is longer than the front. I was going to do that and decided I wanted to stick within the round. I didn't want to go back and forth and back and forth. Um, I, I copied added, that slip, that split you did. hem, uh, the longer. I, I'm not done with the ribbing. I just started it, but I added... Um, an inch and a half to the length mm -hmm. from what the pattern called and this needs to go down a bit But I may add more ribbing even I'm trying to decide I'm going it's going to grow It will but I think I'm gonna put it on waist yarn first Try it on and see if I want to go back take out the ribbing and knit even longer because I have enough yarn that I can add length to it um, But this one was really easy really fun. It's amazing how simple this neckline is this this simple neckline looks so good on. Yes. Like that yes. was the thing that sold me on yep, it when Margaret is, put it on. Neckline. And and I was like, oh, I love yep. that. And then it looks so good on mom. The one I knit for yep. mom looks so good on her. It it stretches out like this and lays out. And it has some short row shaping. Yes. So that the back is a little higher than the front. So, so it's nice. It just is very flattering. Yeah, and it's amazing how fast this goes compared to the last three sweaters that I have made. I was like, wow. This All is of your crazy. last three sweaters have had crazy amounts of stranded color work. Color work or other interesting things that I was doing in it. So um, I, I keep thinking I'm just the slowest knitter in the world and then I've got this. Now, I was thinking I started this like two weeks ago. I My brain, I can't think. It was in April that I started this one, but... It still, for me, has gone very fast, and I really love it. Um, yeah, I'm going to just keep on going. I'm not. My goal isn't to finish this in the next two weeks, but um, I would. I'm down to three projects: this sweater, the other sweater, and the socks that will be done anytime. So, I really love the feeling of getting mm -hmm. all of these done. This one is so simple. I can take this one with me right mm -hmm. now anywhere I go. So it's not that big of a deal. That is nice. So anyways, I like your little basket too. Oh yes, I have these baskets. I bought this for, you know, my my uh, booth, so that shoppers had something to put all their yarn in while they're shopping. It's so cute. <laughs> so I have a stash of these. I looked for four years. I've been looking since 2018, and I finally found shopping baskets that are the right the right style, the size, They're the color, super I love cute. Okay, I think that's all our works in progress. That is. Excellent. Sure. All right, so that means it it's is. time for our getting to know you question. Yay. We had so many ideas, it's hard to pick one. <laughs> it is, it is. There's, there's a lot of things we could talk about. Okay, oh, here we go. So we decided, because with all of our ideas, we have a list ready for the next several um, episodes. Okay, our question is, what book or books have been the most influential in your life? Um, I, we have, we have this uh, deck, I have this deck of cards and it's table topics. It's called Do-It-Yourself Therapy. And that's where it came from. This one says, what book shaped your view of the world? Um, but I wanted to change it to has been the most influential because mm -hmm. those, while similar and related, are not entirely the same thing. And we're going to acknowledge, right, that for us, scripture is number one. 
Yes. And just acknowledge that. We're going to talk about other books. So um, for us, when we talk about books that are most influential, those are what we would consider our core books. Mm -hmm. And so the scriptures are our number one core book, most influential, most meaningful. But Emily, would you tell us a little bit about what a core book is? What does well, that for me, your core book or books are your measuring stick by which you view the rest of the world and you find truth. So if you have truth in your core book, then you look at something else and then you measure it by that and say, yes or no, I accept this in based on that core book. But it's also just about what has shaped your character, mm -hmm. what has shaped your um, worldview, what has shaped the decisions that you make and the things that you value. And what do you, I, I would say for for um, whole or even healing books, I think we've talked about book classifications before. Yeah. Um, but so we've talked before about um, whole, bent, broken and healing stories. And a healing story um, or what I would call a classic doesn't necessarily mean it was written before a certain period of time, but it's something that you can go back to over and over and over again. And you always feel fed by it. You might learn something new by it. Um, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, wear out with yeah. time. That's what I was uh -huh. going to bring up was that you can return to it again and again and again and mm -hmm. continue to be fed by it. Yeah. You know? Okay. So it's really hard to narrow these it down. Is. So I was really good. I was really good and <laughs> narrowed mine down. And then you came here. <laughs> no, well, I was like, okay, that's not fair, Emily. I, I cut those out because of this classification and then I added some in. So uh -huh. I have a, a list that I actually have written down, my core uh -huh. books at home, and it's an ever-growing list, but I've, I have in the top, I have... Not in any order, but I've got a good book, like set of 20 books that to me I consider core books. So here's in the top, I would just say that I refer to, that I refer to and think about and continue to influence me constantly mm -hmm. again and again. Okay, so I would say The Hiding Place by Corey Tenboom. And it's on my this list. On well. <laughs> list. And this is one that I probably refer to the most in mm -hmm. my mind, in my heart all the time. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. Emily and I talk about how we like to view ourselves as Corey and Betsy Ten Boom in our goals and in the things that we aspire to be like. So uh, we don't, at any given time, one of us may be Corey, one of us may be Betsy, mm -hmm. but, you know, we, we try to yep. try to live as they would live. Oh, just okay. love them so much. Next one for me was Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. And I can get into the whys of all these, but would be here forever. So I'm just gonna say that one. Um, Joan of Arc by Mark Twain. That one, so much. And then this is where I cut out because I'm like, okay, it's a whole series, but The Chronicles of Narnia. And I'm at Emily's house and I left mine at home. So I grabbed hers and she's like, but you don't like this set because this is the debate. Yes. This is the debate. Chronological versus publication order. And these were my husband's when he's from the time he was really little. They're very worn. So I bought a new set. But these are in publication date, which is the way you should read the Chronicles of Narnia. <laughs> this is what I say. If one's going to hold you up, read it any way you like. <laughs> um, I do like it in publication order, mm -hmm. but there's value in both. So, so I just the first time yeah. you read it. I do, I do think it's best to read it in publication order. Agreed. But you know what? If you're not going to read it because you don't have that, That's true. then just read it. But I just so, am like, for me, just from a writing perspective, I want to experience the, a story the way the writer intended you. Oh, I yeah. Does that make sense? Like, but like I said, it is a debate for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> so that and the other one that I didn't grab was um, the Little House book mm -hmm. series. Mm -hmm. So those are my, yeah. my I would say... Most influential. My new box set came in the wrong order. I'm so sad. All right. Okay. So I showed the hiding place already. So the reason I'm just, I won't go into detail, but Jane Eyre was the first classic I ever read. I was 11 years old when I read it and it gave me my love for classics. And say what you will about Mr. Rochester and there's a whole lot of stuff, but I still absolutely love this book with all my heart. Well, that's the whole point. 
there's a lot to discuss oh, there in there is. and to think about. And there so is. whether you agree with something or not, there's so good. That's what's so great about a classic is that yeah. it provokes thought and discussion. And if you look at my original paperback version of this, it is literally just Shredding. falling <laughs> apart. Um, also, I'm going to bring up this one. This is called The Fourth Turning by William Strauss and Neil Howe. So The Fourth Turning by, sorry, it used to have a dust jacket. Dust jackets don't often survive in my house uh, by Strauss and Howe. Um, this is a book about patterns of history. And um, it's really been something that I refer back to all the time. Learning from patterns in history. I love it so much. Um, I actually will say about this book, it is very powerful in my life. Also, I think this book is so wordy and so long and you could learn a lot of this stuff just by Googling it. Like it's, Googling it's the fourth quite journey. It's dry. It's very dry. But the but information it's is... so transformational if you can understand the patterns. It's so good. Um, another one that has been really big is Understanding the Times by um, David C. Noble. C. David A. Noble. This is the second edition, I would say. Um, you want to at least get the revised second edition or later. Oh, here um, I keep bumping it. I do. I keep bumping it. And this is about worldviews. It's written from a very slanted biblical Christian worldview. So you, as long as you know that going into it, you can read through it. But it's really helpful in seeing how different worldviews see the world. And it talks about um, Islam. It talks about... Um, um, secular humanism and new age spiritual and things like that. And it's just been really influential in my life again and in my teaching. Um, um, but you have to know it's a very slanted book. I think it's true about lots of books. You don't have to agree with mm -hmm. the author when you're reading a book. Yeah. Sometimes the authors you disagree with can be just even as... more influential. Yeah. Well, we have a friend who is saying that, she wanted a book like that that was written without any any bias any slant and we're mm -hmm. like that's not even really possible because we all have it's bias because mm -hmm. everybody yeah mm -hmm. you have that because of your experience so it's like oh you've lived in a vacuum mm -hmm. without any outside experience or interaction you're still going to have biases <laughs> because but of, just have your eyes open for biases and then recognize them and acknowledge them and then still learn what you can in any yeah. in any spot. Yeah. And then I've got the Lord of the Rings here. I'll show this one. The Lord of the Rings. Oh, we just love this so much in our household. So, so much. And I could go on and on, but this is definitely one of those comfort things you go back to over and over mm -hmm. and over again. And it's just got so many powerful characters and moments and love and valor. And oh, it's just good. Good, good, good. Oh, so many good books. I was one that I loved to read. I was a voracious reader growing up, but I just read whatever caught my eye, mm -hmm. whatever was fun, whatever was interesting. And then um, Emily invited me when I was a young mother to join a book group that you were part of. And it was it was a more of a study mm -hmm. book group, not just a discuss the most you know, New York, New York Times bestseller, number one mm -hmm. book of the year, whatever. Which that's great too. Yeah. yeah. But I hadn't been experienced, been exposed to anything like that before. And, um, so it, it was one, like you're preparing to go into this discussion. It was, it was something mm -hmm. very different. And it was the first time I think I really read a classic choosing to do that myself. Mm -hmm. And it changed it changed me so much. And mm -hmm. since then I have loved classics. I didn't, yeah, I just didn't care about that before, but it really changed. Yeah, me too. So much about my life because those have influenced my life so much. So yeah, there's a lot to be learned from all different types of mm -hmm. book groups, books, different types of things. But these are the ones I'm that... I'm finally halfway through War and Peace. I love it so much. Still haven't even... Oh had the desire to start that one. Oh. <laughs> I bought okay, it. Okay, but I'll have to see. <laughs> watch watch the mini series. As I'm reading, I think it's great. If you watch the mini series, mm -hmm. if I hadn't watched that first, I would be lost in the mm -hmm. book. But I, it is so faithful 
to the book. Oh, that's good. It's so faithful. I mean, it's not word for word. Some of it is word for word, but the characters are spot on and the events that are happening are spot on. So mm -hmm. it's been, it's so good, that's but it is violent. Oh, okay. And there are a couple of sketchy scenes because there are a lot of sketchy people in more of these. Anyway. That's how I learned to love um, Pride and Prejudice yeah. and all of her books was I had read it or started reading it and I just was like, what is this? This is so boring. Mm -hmm. This is so, whatever. And then, um, and I had watched the A&E mini series, which I also thought was very boring. But then I watched the BBC Pride and Prejudice. Writ screenwriter Andrew Davies, who also wrote War and Peace. And that <laughs> changed it for me, and I got it. And then I went back and read it, and I was like, oh, I understand the wit. I understand yeah. the depth of the characters. <laughs> you know, and after that, I was hooked. Um, and the same thing for Winnie the Pooh, A.A. A. Milne, Winnie the Pooh. I yeah. tried reading that aloud to my kids, and I just am like, this is... This doesn't make sense, but there is a flow and a rhythm to it, like poetry, which mm. I couldn't grasp until I had heard it. Oh, and so yeah. I heard it, and all of a sudden it came to life. With an and audio was, book? Is yeah. that what it was? Mm -hmm. And um, then we started reading that to Nadia, and she listened to it as well, and that is one of her core books. I love it. And we both, I still reread it every single year and I love it and it really touches my heart, but I had to hear it first in order to get it. That it's not the Disney version of Winnie the no, Pooh. No, yeah. no, no, no. Mm. It's, it is so witty, so funny. It, like, it's heartwarming. There's a lot of good things about it. What do you have? I you forgot have a, a work in progress. Oh, well, let's go back. <laughs> this okay. is a big deal. <laughs> yeah, don't forget this one. I just looked over there. I was like, hey, what about this? I'm... Oh, we, did we finish our book discussion? Yes, we did. Well, we went long. <laughs> we could we did go on forever on books. Oh, we're at one hour and 51 minutes. Okay. okay. Well, yeah. I have to show that this. Yeah. Cool. I love this one. I am making a quilt for my daughter, Aria. Okay, I'll hold up yes, this. Yes, there. I've got. Oh, I'll be Sandra. Are you proud of me, Sandra? Now put one on your chest. She always uses her chest as And the now we see the difference board. between our chests. <laughs> Well, I can't even hide. Here, I'll get you. I can't even hide a dollar bill in mine. There we go. Let everybody. There, we're in better shape now. <laughs> they're all basically the same. They're, I mean, they're so they're, they're um, the same randomly fabrics. placed colors. Random, as in, I very carefully laid them out and made sure <laughs> that, that it looks random. Well, yes, that it looked random. I didn't want any, you know, Together. colors next to each other and stuff like that. But um, they're just so cute. And they will have white sashing between them. This fabric, I don't know if you probably, oh, you can see. There's a cherry print on the white on white. This to me screams summer, summer picnic. And Just this, so happy. This is my favorite fabric is this yellow one with little bees and little hexagons on it. So and at I first like I thought, one, the oh, here, oh the these bees. two. The strawberries oh, are so I cute. Love those two. Yeah, the strawberries are very cute. Um, and there's strawberries on this, there's strawberries yeah. on red. Strawberries and cherries at summertime uh -huh. and checks. Oh. And yeah, lots of gingham. You know what I want to dress like in the summer? What? A 4th of July picnic tablecloth. Table That's what I want to dress There's nothing like. wrong with that. <laughs> so this little, this little um, bumblebee, my husband was looking at the fabric and he said, are those little sheep? I'm like, sheep? They're bumblebees. But look at them like this. They look like little black-faced, black-eared sheep. Can you see that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. But... Anyway, I have finished all the blocks for this quilt. It will have a white sashing around them. But it's fun because most of the quilts I make, you know, I love stars, but they would tend to have a print, prints making the star and then white as the background. And so it's just fun to have a different I love it. pattern. It's going to be the cutest. And this is for it's Aria. It's so for... Aria. So this was, I had started this as going to be a wedding quilt for her. Um, and then she got married in 41 days after her engagement. So it that stopped being happen. a wedding quilt. <laughs> I said, I was stressing. I'm down there sewing. And I'm like, honey, I just have to tell you, there is no way I'm going to get this quilt done for your wedding if you're expecting me to quilt it. Because mm -hmm. for her, she was like, I really want for us to sit around the quilting frames and the ants come over and quilt the quilt. And I was like, 
It's not. You're getting happen. married in 41 days. <laughs> um, it's not going to work. We're lucky <laughs> anyway, for you to just. And as soon as I said that, she goes, oh, no, I know. It's fast. Don't even worry about it. Just don't even think about it till like next year sometime. So, and I feel bad because I still haven't done my son and daughter-in-law's wedding quilt. But I will also work on that this year. But here's my stack of all my blocks. That's a fun summer activity. So it fun is fun. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm really happy that this part is done. I'm eager to get it. The sashing won't take too long to put them all together. Oh. And then, oh, I was saying this yellow with the bumblebees is the backing. Oh, okay. Which is so perfect for Aria. And then there's some reds. And I think I picked maybe this one Love is it. one of the other, like one of the borders. I don't remember, but... Seriously, I can't think of a more perfect quilt. That is just so cute. Isn't it fun? The colors are fantastic. Especially Those if you don't look too closely at my points and stuff like that, then you'll be great. Well, I was about to bring that up. <laughs> but... <laughs> but it's so Aria. Yeah. It's so her. These are just her kinds of colors. But... So anyway, that's really fun. So I had to share that. Thank you. I'm glad you did. Okay. I was going to share something before our end. I have, oh, let me get to it. We've got so much stuff here. It's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Okay. How could two women need this much stuff? I said I didn't even bring all the stuff I wanted to bring. Okay, I, if you've watched before, you know that I really love treasure journals, treasure journaling, and we even gave one away at, for our um, knit along in March, I think we gave that away. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I had a viewer and friend online who asked if she could send me some supplies. I'm like, well, I won't turn you down there. <laughs> and boy, did she send some supplies. So her name's um, Jackie. Sorry, I keep wanting to say JC because it's spelled J A C I. But um, Jackie, she's needles in my hand on Instagram. Oh, she sent. <laughs> oh whoa some stuff <laughs> so very very thoughtful I don't want to go through everything here but I asked her if I could share some of it with you because it's just fun to see um, these are some of the really fun things I love oh. this a picnic for bunny kins bunny kins in, oh. in here are several different bunny themed things so I can tell she was going to make something with Cute. this bunny book but oh, look how adorable these illustrations are they're just so oh sweet. my goodness so That's that along so with cute. Um, a few other golden books which are really fun darling and in here is a kit a book binding kit essentially oh. to do some book binding, which is really nice, so that if I have a friend who needs some, then I will have that. Um, but also, this is what I was excited about. There's a lot of different blending brushes. Oh, that's nice. Because I needed some of these and I didn't have any, so that's really nice. And um, I'm really, really excited about these things here. So there's a lot of different tea dyed mm. ephemera, envelopes, papers, tags. Um, and then eight, like full pages gorgeous and then like old book pages of varying sizes and stuff there's some big ones and some music and stuff and there's some more things in there but um, it was just really fun so I haven't had any time to do any treasure journaling for the last couple of months and so my plan is this summer, I want to do some sewing. I always want to do a good chunk of sewing in the summer. That's my mm -hmm. favorite thing to do in the summer. And then I want to do some more treasure journaling. I've had some people ask if I would do some workshops and I'm like, that sounds super fun, but just the organizing, mm -hmm. like where to do it. And even if it's online, I'm like, that's, I don't even know where to do it, how to do registration, how to do like, like the actual teaching of it. That's not hard. So if somebody else arranged but it's the, all, for it's, the whole thing and then you just have to show up and teach yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what they do at, you know, uh, fiber festivals and things like that. Mm -hmm. They arrange the venue and then you find teachers for things and 
and I'm like, oh, it'd be fun, but I don't have what it takes to do all of the organizing. So the answer to that would be no, unless somebody else wants to organize that. <laughs> um, but thank you so much for sending those That's to me. That's so fun. I really appreciate it. I'm going to have so much fun making those. I have lots of summer plans. So... I have my I have my notes because I write these down so I don't forget and get distracted <laughs> when other flashy things show up. So I have my knitting and crochet plans and I have other making plans and on my other making plans are some sewing of wide leg flowy pants, trousers, um, baby clothing. I'm making patriotic stuff for my daughter's boyfriend's daughter. Anyway, she's one year old and she needs some patriotic summery things. And I bought fabric yesterday for it and went overboard. <laughs> and um, an unbirthday party gift. We have unbirthday um, oh, yeah. party in our knitting group. And I have a plan of what I'm making. That's there. fun. And my summer knitting plans. So I'm going to finish my sweaters. We have a secret project in our knitting group. Mm -hmm. The summer sock camp. Um, scrappy cowl. A brioche cowl. I'm going to learn to brioche. Mm -hmm. I have a pattern for that, and I want to do some toy knitting and amigurumi crochet there, and junk journaling. I'm doing that. So, so you've got your summer so My booked. Whole... You won't be able to oh, do no, anything I... else. <laughs> what, so planned out with all of the fun things. I'm sorry if anybody wanted me to do anything with you. You have to join me in one of those. So I am really excited. I won't be able to make all of those things, but. Those I are just, the things on your list. Those are the things that I'm like, mm -hmm. I want to go there first and mm -hmm. do those things. Yeah. Because it's so easy when something else comes up and you're like, oh, Ooh, <laughs> yeah. squirrel, you know, and <laughs> you go over there. And then I, the year is over, the summer is over. And I'm like, I didn't do any of the things I really wanted to do, you know. So yeah. if I write those down, I go back to those first. That's excellent. Oh, I think we did it. No. Shop news. Shop news. Shop news. I got to get up. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, okay. We had um, the, the the event, the Fiber Festival, and for a while I had closed my shop down while I was getting prepared for that, and then I opened it up and had a whole bunch of things in there, but I still haven't put everything in there because mm. I just need to spend a lot of time photographing things. That's the biggest holdup is that I have to photograph and edit those and get the listings up. So I'm just working on it bit by bit, but I've got in my shop, I've restocked the Lucky Star sock kits. I only have two of the black ones left. This is probably my favorite. It's because so it's so 80s. Like It really is. Just so fun. And the contrast is just so high. Anyways, this is how they come. Um, is packaged like this. Um, so this one is called um, Retro Wave, and this one is called uh, Roller Rink. That's the different colorway op so options. Fitting. So fitting. Um, so I have more of these in my shop right now, and you can order. It's the same color minis with both, right? Or are they different? No, there, there's some that are the same, but mm. like some of the oranges are slightly different, and the pinks sense. are like there's certain things that are just slightly different because I wanted it to show up in a different way on. Nice. So, um, you can order it with or without a printed pattern. Um, so I, I didn't sell the pattern. Like it's not a kit where you automatically get the pattern. You can purchase the pattern digitally. You can purchase the sock set. You can purchase the digital or the printed pattern to go with this if you want. I like the printed pattern because it looks really nice. It's like a booklet and it's pretty and I like things printed. You know me. I like <laughs> anyways, but not everybody does. And then to go along with the super bright summery things, I've got this mini skein set that's called Taste the Rainbow. <laughs> I just love to go super bright and bold and fun and colorful. That's so cute. And then I've got some new colorways. This one is actually um, kind of a version of sock blanks that I did last year. This one's called Summer Splash. I used the same dyes and created this colorway and I have it, an example of it in a sock tube, but oh no, you can see it there kind of. 
So this is one thing that I'm working on getting ready to put in the shop, but it's going to take time because I've got to photograph them all. And these are sock tubes that I'm selling of my yarn and they're just a tube. It's not a full sock. It's not um, your yarn that you send to me. It's just what yarn I feel like cranking and I put it into my shop. So it this they're ones that I have now. They're all 64 stitch um, count on an eight and a half stitch um, per inch gauge. Yeah, gauge, is that what I'm trying to say? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, but what I was saying earlier is their um, instructions for how to do this, I have on the back here some information about the sock tube and on the bottom I have a, a website, no, YouTube channel to go to. No, this one is the website, the website but they have a whole series of videos. I was getting ready to create this and then thought, do I really need to reinvent the wheel? If it's been done already, I'd rather send you to somebody else so that they can get the, the um, recognition and mm -hmm. views for that. And if there's any ads or whatever, then they get paid for their work. So anyways, it's really good. What I've recommended on here, which is liftbridgeyarns.com slash sock uh, dash tube dash knitting. Mm -hmm. But liftbridgeyarns.com, really good information for how to use sock tubes. Okay, and then new colorway. Okay, so Instagram, they are so good with their targeted ads and one of them was a pajama set with strawberries on them and I really wanted that one. But the colors were so beautiful that I took a screenshot and dyed a colorway based <laughs> on it and it's called Wild Strawberry and I just love it. It's reds and hot pinks and greens and teals and it just screams my happy summer heart like summer loving. And here is what it looks like cranked into a sock tube. I love it. I love it. Love it. This is one that I think would be a fun sweater held with mohair. Oh, that would be. And then this one. This one is Sour Martian Mix. <laughs> based off of this candy that I've been trying, which is actually pretty good. Emily, you might want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Love that one. I've done a couple of different, like, um, space-themed things. And I have some more planned, which is kind of funny. I don't know why, but I just get in the mood. This and is my this favorite one. one. I've been wanting to do this one it's forever. It's so perfect. But it's because I have been waiting to find these in the store. So this one is called Dragon Fruit. And I was going to do this last year, but when I was ready to dye it, I couldn't find dragon fruit in the store and I kept looking and kept looking and kept looking and it was finally there. So I got it and I immediately had to come home and <laughs> dye the yarn. And so I have pictures of this one that I'll insert, but I really like it cause it's I, like, it's essentially pinks and greens and stuff, you mm -hmm. know, like wild strawberry, but I wanted to tone it down mm -hmm. and this has black specks in there. And also the way I have dyed these two is they are variegated, but they're not necessarily in chunks where it will swirl and cool in the same way. I try to make it so that it breaks it up. So the way I've dyed it, 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 it won't do that quite as much, depending on how you knit. So what you're making with it. So I have a lot more things, but that's, that's so a So those selection. are all in your shop right now? Those are all in my shop right now, except for the sock tubes. I have to work on getting mm -hmm. the sock tubes, but I brought that to show you what it looked like knit up. So, so and fun. when you get a sock tube, it has waste yarn on both ends. You've got this long tube and you can easily make two pairs of socks with one tube. And mm -hmm. if you want to do minis and contrasting cuff seals and toes, or not minis, shorties, Mm -hmm. I know someone who's done three pairs. Actually, mm -hmm. there's another person right now who's doing three pairs. So um, that's that's how they come. That's excellent. Okay. okay. It's a long one. It, it is, <laughs> but you know what? That's why God invented the pause button. <laughs> <laughs> Made this far, it was a little too late to hear that. <laughs> True. 
remember for next time. <laughs> It'll be three hours next time. I'm just joking. Could you imagine? It might be because, I don't know, summertime gets crazy. Who oh, knows what's happening? But Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But have today. a great summer. Well, beginning of your summer. We'll, we will see you before the summer's over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> see you later. Bye.